It's a huge honor, obviously. Um, great franchise, original six. Um, you know, I had the opportunity to play here for a little bit way back in the day, and it's uh, nothing but first class here in a first class organization, and I'm, I'm very honored to be the head coach. The Craig Berube era has begun, making his very first public appearance as Leafs head coach yesterday. So will he bring his Stanley Cup winning ways to Leafs Nation? All right, let's so. pose that question. <laughs> A lot of Leafs Nation are hoping so indeed. Steve Coolius is the host of Power Play on Sirius XM NHL Radio Network. Steve, appreciate uh, you joining us again this morning to talk about this. How much pressure is on Craig Berube uh, after the Leafs really have basically floundered in the playoffs for the last, you know, the, this current iteration of the team? Well, as soon as you're good, Sparky Anderson once said, the closer you are to winning, the harder it is to lose. Uh, they're close to winning. The argument is how close. And it was time for a change. Maybe it's like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. You go back to Mike Babcock, too hard. Sheldon Keefe, too soft. And maybe Craig Berube will be just right, but hmm. also right enough. We talk about keeping players accountable. I think there needs to be a fear factor. When someone walks into the dressing room, there was a, you know, respect factor. When Mike was here, it didn't work out. Sheldon was training on the job, as was Kyle Dubas. I don't think that's right in Toronto. That's something you do in Columbus. Uh, that's something you might do in Utah. That's not something that should have been done in Toronto. And a move like this probably should have been done a few years ago. You have a pool of coaches. Uh, Joel Quenville, not available yet. You got Mike Sullivan, not available. He's won two cups with... Pittsburgh, obviously. Uh, John Cooper, two cups, not available. So you look at the best available coaches. I think the Leafs interviewed two of them. And I think the best of the available coaches got the job right man at the right time in Toronto. Let's talk a little bit about that coaching style here. So we know the Leafs do quite well during the regular season. It's the playoffs when they really mm -hmm. seem to struggle. So what do you think Ruby's going to bring in here uh, when it comes to a, a change or how, what he might tweak when it comes to the playoffs if we make it that far? Well, I think one of the things that's a surprise that one of the biggest issues for the Leafs in the playoffs for such an offensive team has actually been scoring in the playoffs, which is surprising. So I think his style, going back to the way he won in St. Louis, might be more of a less finesse club, top to bottom in the lineup, and more of a playoff grinding style. Maybe winning ugly and scoring some ugly goals. Mm -hmm. Another thing is the PK. Uh, unmitigated disaster for the most part in the playoffs. Even though, like to Zach Hyman, lose a draw, but a boom, but a bing, back of the net. Couldn't kill a penalty against the Bruins this year. So when you look at the two biggest things that really matter, killing penalties, I think the special teams on the power play will be better than it was this year. And scoring five on five in the playoffs to get from losing a 2 1 game, guys, to winning those 3 2 games, winning playoff gritty and uglier. Well, you know, uh, you just need to win in the playoffs. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, we know they're going to make the playoffs with all the talent, with all the scoring potential they have. That seems like a given kind of year after year with this current roster. But what about the roster, Steve? I mean, changing the head coach, that's one thing that can change, you know, all of what you've described already. But what about the roster? Do you think there are some moves that need to be made when it comes to the players on the ice listening to Barubi? Well, I think that's coming if some of the players who hold all the cards want it to happen. And at the top of the list is Mitch Marner. Mm -hmm. And as people have said on my program, Dave Paniota is the first I heard who talked about Mitch not saying no right now. The Leafs alluded to kind of yesterday they haven't talked to him. Um, I, I find that hard to believe that nobody's had soft conversations about the future. And there are some rumblings out there. You know, you're looking at players like William Nylander who performed in the playoffs. Is it more of a Max Domi, Tyler Bertuzzi player staying? and players of that ilk who are grittier and can perform in the playoffs, the ones that the Leafs are going to move forward with. I really think it starts with Mitch, because I don't think John's going anywhere. He's got a year left. He took a pay cut to come. And then if it works out, he might take a extended deal at a much lower AAV, four or five million, mm. to get to 500 goals and retire as a Maple Leaf. I think he bought half the GTHL, for God's sake, with Sam Gagne, so he does not want to go. It really centers around Mitch and a package that could be attained in a sign and trade. Mm. That's where it starts. Yeah, a lot of speculation on this. We'll have to see what happens. And I feel like we could talk about this all day, but Steve Coolius, that's all our time. So thank you so much for making the time to talk to us about this new coach that uh, we have high hopes for here. Yeah, it's going to be quite the offseason, Steve. Thanks so much. Yeah, it's uh, summer in Toronto. The summer hockey will go on until Labor Day. Nick, no light. No more light until next season, okay? okay. We'll light you up again sometime soon then, Steve. Thanks so much. <laughs>